crypto. We can't let anybody else find out who we are. My eyes are up here. I personally would not advise that strategy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bugs Bunny or Tweety Bird? How to make money in crypto. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people's channel. Home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. No channel works harder. Keep you in the know about crypto. I want a hyphen in between crypto and toe. Crypto. My name is Ben. Every day we come to you live, 11.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today is, uh, got to do that math, Thursday, March 10th. Yep. Right? Uh, it's 75 degrees in here. It's been cooler. We've been keeping the door open. Wear my BitBoy Bombers shirt. These are going to be that. available on the merch store. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Did you not know that? No, I didn't know they were going to Well, sell. they made them for us. Yeah. Take, takedown made these. You know? Yeah. So, uh, we love Takedown. They're great. Uh, when When is the full-blown launch of the new merch? Uh, I saw we had the one shirt up there, but that was it. Yeah, we've only got the one thing up there right now. We were actually having a meeting about that this morning, trying to get... There's a lot of back-end work we yeah. have to get done. Always uh, got to be working on the back. You know. You know, you know how yeah, it goes. I know. Bing bong. Bing bong. So, it's coming. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, this is our, our work softball shirt. So, we have our work softball team. It's uh, starting next Wednesday. So, we'll see. I'm playing first base. We'll see what happens. We get the, we're, we're in the beginner. Oh. We'll probably win first So, base. we were actually out last night, and the subject of this first game came up, and Brian mm -hmm. was saying, my brother was actually talking about hanging out, and Brian said, we need to get you an outfit. He wants the mascot. A mascot. He wants to run around in the mascot costume. Yeah. And what? what is it? BitBoy? Uh, I guess. A big or, bomb? A big bomb. That's what we were doing. It may not be the best about. time to be running around that, with like a big bomb. These that's kind of what we said. But yeah. he, uh, he did volunteer to mascot if we want one, which yeah. would probably be the only softball team with a mascot. <laughs> it definitely would be. We're going to be uh, the only, the only uh, team out there uh, with the YouTube channel. Of course. I'm pretty sure. Pretty confident none of the other teams over there at Hobgood Park are going to have a uh, YouTube channel. They're not going to have cameramen. They're, they're filming stuff. So, really excited. Uh, so, we're, we're, guys, we're talking about um, our portfolio reveal video, which we'll, we'll be doing. I think we're going to – we're just having a hard time figuring out how we're going to integrate all the crypto we own because some of it is in nodes and some of it is in land and sandbox. And so, we want to make sure we give you guys an accurate uh, look – because we've gone down in our portfolio a pretty good bit, obviously, as the markets drop, but a little bit more even because we've been doing other things with the crypto other than just seeing it in the portfolio. So trying to figure out the best way to uh, make this happen for you guys. I, I want to try to shoot it tomorrow and maybe put it out Saturday or Sunday, but not 100%. So I know a lot of you guys are wanting that uh, video here pretty soon. Oh, um, also, lots but, of uh, positive comments on the news wrap-up last night. Oh, Short really? Video. Yeah, they really liked it. Yeah, that was good. We're going to be doing that every day, Monday through Friday. Um, we should be yeah. at least I'm excited about that new little quick short video for you guys. It just wasn't working for me filming those from home. I mean, I like to be with my family at night and get all kinds of baseball practice and stuff like that. So, uh, guys, we got the CPI number out today, right? That's really huge. Yeah. Uh, it came out 7.9%. Is that official? That's what I heard. 7.9%. How do they, how does the number leak always the day before they release it? Uh, I have no idea. Who, who, who's your, who is leaking the CPI numbers <laughs> from the government? Who knows? <sighs> Probably the same people that figure out the weird way to come up with it to begin with. I wish I was in that room. And they, all right, now inflation's real bad. It's like 25% right now. How, how can we make it look like it's 4%? Yeah. Well, if you take this number, you carry it over, and you divide by 70, you know, 0.4 times the product of uh, pi times uh, Fibonacci, you get right. CPI. And so. worst case scenario, if something's not working, just take those numbers out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Those numbers are so insane. Well, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Uh, we'll get started here on Market Watch. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Don't forget uh, to hit us up on Twitter, 820.2K. I'm going to be changing this back to my regular. We need a new headshot. Can yeah. we take a headshot today? Sure. Let's try to make that happen. Uh, we need a new graphic for that because this one right here, this, this is just not hitting it for me anymore. You don't like that? I, I definitely do not like this. Yeah, what yeah. was up? Yeah, you can walk through. You're, you're not on the camera. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yeah, uh, we got people walking through here all the time. It's great stuff. Uh, but yeah, I want to get rid of that picture. My face is a little too fat. They said, days. what about a headshot with an eye patch? 
<laughs> one that looks like the crypto. Hey. Oh, not a bad idea. Not no. a bad idea. Uh, don't forget to follow my uh, personal Instagram over here, Dad Jokes uh, for the win. Get fun photos of me and my family and stuff like that. Looking at the markets here. Coming in. Ooh, is that the latest number? Pretty big drop from yesterday. Almost a uh, almost $100 billion drop from yesterday. I think we were at like 1.8 three yesterday something like that mm -hmm. coming back in at 1.747 trillion volume I, I tell you the volume has been much higher consistently for the last couple of weeks uh does this have anything to do with you know i don't know stuff going on with uh rubles ukraine stuff like that hey i heard a very interesting question by the way what's that this is this is a very interesting question that was posed this morning on a radio show i was, I was just flipping through the channels on sirius and uh they said should we sanction medicine prescriptions from going over to russia oh, gosh. should we cut off the russian people from medicine this is a slippery slope that's slow. the question that was posed this morning wow wow what about that oh man oh well sorry mr russian guy you needed that medicine to live president took over her place so let's uh, let's go and kill you. Yeah, that's sad. Very sad. That's where we're at. Uh, Bitcoin dominance forty two point five percent. ETH dominance seventeen point eight percent. And for only twelve Paraguays. Wow. Twelve Paraguays. That's the lowest number of guays, pairs of guays, that we've seen. This is insane. Yeah. How low this is. It's like what they're doing is actually starting to work. So so here's the thing though, like. Do you think we can also see this, the the uh, number of GUI for a gas transaction? Uh, can we also see this as like a an indicator for price action? What I mean by this is, how much lower can that GUI really go? Like, mm -hmm. how much lower can a transaction cost be? It's already at twenty four. That's basically nothing. I mean, we we saw these regularly, um, you know, at, at three or four hundred yeah. at one point. 24, is this close to a bottom, maybe? Because how much further can Ethereum drop and still, you know, maintain activity on the network? I know they're not necessarily connected, but in a loose way, they are. Like, you know, we're going to see this number get down to 10, you know? I don't know. So, something to think about. Um, Bitcoin coming in at $39,097. Hey, but it's going to 100K. We're going to tell you about that today. <laughs> I made a prediction Bitcoin's going to $100,000. Take it from me. That always works out. They Ethereum. Say, what? Did, did they say when? Nine months. Nine yeah, months. Nine wow. months. Uh, twenty-five ninety-two for Ethereum. Uh, BNB three sixty-six. Wow, that took a big hit. Yeah, it did. Um, let's see. Terra Luna down a little bit. XRP down a little bit. God, I hate seeing XRP in that sixty-seven to seventy-two cent range. Like, it seems see it above that. has a hard time ever since it fell below seventy-five. I feel like a month or two ago, it's had a tough time getting back above it. Yeah. I think it was at 76 yesterday, and then... Was it? I just yeah. mean that loose 75 area yeah, seems yeah. to be... And Cardano, got up, like 70 to 80 cents has been about the same thing. Yeah. They, they can't get back up towards a dollar. When they were Solana getting there. crushed right now. Let's see. Well, it's getting crushed. Let's look at the biggest winners of the day. I guess winners of the day. Wow. We have Icon at 29% that was, pumpage. That was the one I was trying to think of yesterday when we were talking about before the hype was, you know, Chinese this. That was supposedly the Korean smart contract platform, right? Yeah. Icon? Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then OMG pumping. Uh, wave still going up a little bit. Thorchain up a little bit, but still down for the week. Icon is one of those, um, when you talk about, like, you know, the EOS, you know, what's the EOS? Like, what's yeah. the icon? Right. You know, icon's definitely one that fits into that category of something that, I mean, has never returned all time highs. And it's one of those things, guys, I don't understand why people are going to realize this. And I don't know how, how to beat this dead horse more and more and more. The tech and the capabilities of a project don't mean that much. They, re they, they really don't. They, they don't mean. Icon, people that love Icon, they say, the tech is so great, it's so fantastic. I know, I know people that say, the ICP test or tech is the very, very, very best. Nothing is close to it. It doesn't matter that much. But what matters is the sentiment around it. In regards of the capabilities of Icon, people are not excited about it. And they have not been excited about it. 
you've got to find a way if you are a project to merge the heck along with the speculation, excitement, and community. If you can't do all those things together, you're not going to really have a, a, a good project. I mean, look at Tezos. It's one that's got great tech. It's got great setup for governance. It's got a lot of great things to like about it. But the marketing and the hype and the sentiment around the community, it just has never been able to push it really forward. Cosmos, a little more exciting, I think, than uh, Tezos. But same thing for Cosmos. It comes in waves, comes up, and it'll go back down. But, you know, are we going to look at some of those projects? As, you know, they just couldn't grab the ball and take it across the, the you know, goal line when time was, you know, when it was necessary. Look at Icon. This is a great example of a project that wasn't able to do that. Mm -hmm. But look at Waves. I mean, Waves, a lot of people would have put in that same category, and Waves has made quite a resurgence here. Um, talking waves. to somebody yesterday who finally sold his Waves bags he had since, like, 2020, 2018 or something. Interesting. What were you going to say? Nothing. I said they were making Waves. Oh, they were making waves. Yeah. That's funny, TJ. Yeah. You're really funny. You should do more comedy on the show. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Monero down 12% after May. It's amazing to me that Monero, after the great week it had, is still down 3.7% for the week. That is wild. That's like you, you get so caught up on the pumps, you know? Like, oh, it's up 40%. Well, down, you know, still down 3% for the week. So, okay. <laughs> Moving right along here. Bitcoin fails to sustain rally and drops back below 40K. This is what we're dealing with today. Um, and it feels like one day we're coming in here and we're super bullish, and then the next day we're coming in here and we're like, bow, bow, bow. yeah. Bitcoin's been trading above and ascending support lines since January 22nd. Support has been validated many times. However, the price decreased considerably the next day, virtually negating the entire previous increase. Uh, Bitcoin is currently in the process of creating a bearish engulfing candlestick. Uh, this is a bearish candlestick pattern that could lead to a lower price. That's on the one-day chart. Confirmed, this would also cause it to break down from the ascending support line. So not good when you get a bearish candle at the bottom of a support line. Um, let's see. It rejected, uh, Bitcoin rejected above resistance, so we broke up above it. Now we've gone back down below it. Uh, taking a look at some other stuff regarding Bitcoin price. Bitcoin prints classic BART pattern as BTC price dies back below 40K. If you don't know what a BART pattern is, this is it. It's basically a pump, sideways action, and dump. You also have an inverse. Uh, an inverse would be a dump, followed by a sideways, followed by a pump. They say this because of, uh, I think his name is Bart Scampson. Well, I was going to say Bart Simpson. Looks like Bart Simpson's head. Oh, it's not Bart Scampson. Do you know Bart Scampson? Does Never anybody know Bart Scampson? Never heard of him. Okay, well, a lot of people say it was uh, Bart Scampson was created before Bart Simpson. Really? Just something to look into. Hmm. Um, that's from an episode of a very niche television show. I'll be surprised if anybody gets that right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely looks like Bart Simpson. Uh, the Bart pattern here you get. Um, so it says, let's see here. The pair had managed to pass 42,000. There it is. There There's Bart is. Scampson. So Bart Scampson is into, uh, what was that kind of music that like the Mighty Mighty Boston's played? Like the Mighty Boston, Mighty Mighty Boston. Does anybody know that band? I have no it's idea. It's like, you know, a bunch of trombones and stuff. Like big band music? Kind of, but it's like kind of edgy. Like They call it ska music? Ska? Okay, Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a lot of games. horns and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's Bart's games. Interesting. <sighs> I'm seeing if anybody got the joke. <laughs> yeah, someone got it. Someone got it. Okay, perfect. Such bar formations have come several times a week prior and underscore the difficulty experienced by market stuck firmly in an established trading range. Um, let's see. I don't want to show that guy. I don't want that guy. Um, let's see. Hoping for upside continuation. Fried bulls this morning. It's not PA, but but PP ping pong. What is PP oh, ping pong? I want to. I don't know, but I've been meaning to. We have a ping pong on table downstairs Scott. for like six months. I've been meaning to get that going. Look at all my Scott people, man. My Scott people. They're like. <laughs> That, like XRP Army, you know, throw, throw the S up, you know, if you're into ska or the other way. I, I don't know. That's throw the S up if you're into ska music. Okay. Uh, CPI number came out. Um, becoming chart underlying key resistance levels. Altcoins and copycat u turn Still waiting for that imminent altcoin season. Inflation sets fresh 40-year high. February CPI rises 7.9% over last year. 
U.S. consumers paid more for a variety of goods and services in February compared to the prior month and year, uh, with prices climbing across the economy amid lingering supply and demand imbalances. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics Consumer Price Index rose 7.9% compared to last year. Mm, look at that. I mean, did you know how bad inflation was in like the late 80s or late 70s? No. I wasn't born yet. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, you see the chart there? Well, yeah. I mean, I looking back, yeah, I knew it was bad. And that's what caused us to come off the gold standard. Basically, we were printing more dollars than we had gold all over the world. And then everybody was like, wait a minute. There's a lot of dollars coming out of the United States. We want to start changing these for gold. And we were like, yeah, about that. We're not going to do that anymore. What did, how did we get out of this inflation back then, I wonder? And I think it also had to do a lot. There was a lot of, uh, you know, similar to what we're seeing right now, a lot of turbulence in the oil prices back then as well. I uh, remember, you know, the saw pictures of, you know, people waiting in line hours to get gas and stuff like that when Jimmy Carter was president. Is Joe Biden the new Jimmy Carter? I don't know. Throw it out there. A lot of people like him. Uh, surge in energy prices was one of the key co contributors. Um, further impact from the Russia-Ukraine crisis, extended jump in energy prices that will, uh, that has ensued will likely show up in the CPI data in March, given the invasion first began in late February. Since then, gas prices at the pump have jumped to a record levels. Crude oil prices climbed to 14-year highs, briefly topped 130 bucks a barrel. I tell you some, something else to think about there is, you know, Germany announced today that they are going to be expanding their, look, Ger Germany is scared right now. Ger Germany is scared. Russia is going to go into Germany. Like, that's something that they are seriously concerned about. I know it sounds insane. Um, but, I mean, all of this would have sounded much more insane just a few weeks ago, a few months ago. But now these are realities. Talk about increasing their uh, military budget drastically, which, you know. Shocker. Shocker. Um, uh, they already do 2% a year increase. They're talking about maybe 5%, maybe a huge increase in their military spending. Um, no, you cannot beat me at badminton. Forget about that. I'll crush you. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, they're talking about, um, uh, cutting off. So we have cut off like Russian oil at this point. We said, we're not going to take it. Germany can't because Germany is like, that's most of their oil. Like they're getting such a high percentage from Russia. They can't do that. But what they did say is they're going to look for other sources. So, you know, we're still going to see a lot of these, uh, oil prices really fluctuate as countries are, you know, looking at other options as they're cutting out Russia and, and what is that going to do for Russia? You know, um, are they going to have to really decrease the price for their barrels? You know, they're not, uh, Russia's not part of OPEC, by the way. Do you know that? Uh, yes. Yeah, they're, they're right outside of OPEC, but they kind of work together. So, um, but anyways, let's see what else is going on with inflation here. Of course, CPI rose 6.4%, another made up number. You know why they said that. Uh, one of the stickier inflationary categories, price for shelter, only rose 0.6% year over year. Uh, airline fares jumped 5.2%, more than double the increase from January. Mass mandates on planes should be over soon. I saw some, some airlines are already removing those mandates, so that's good news. Mm -hmm. I hate flying with that thing. Yeah. Do any of y'all love breathing your own air? <laughs> like, who loves that? Are there people out there that love that? I don't know. I think there are. I love it. I hate it. I got hot breath. Maybe you don't have hot breath. If you got hot breath, you don't like it. Um, okay. So CPI numbers real bad. Willie Wu lays out theory on who might be dumping the crypto market. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he says it's BitBoy Crypto. That's what he says. He says, I've got enough Bitcoin to tank the whole market. Uh, leaning on-chain analyst Willie Wu lay out theory about a possible group of investors that are pushing the crypto market down. This is... Uh, Giant leap here of faith he's making on this one. Uh, people with a lot of Bitcoin. Wow. According to Wu, the earliest buyers that purchased Bitcoin for less than a thousand bucks were the major sellers that will get the crypto at a larger discount. According to game theory, investors who have purchased Bitcoin significantly cheaper than 99.9% .9 of the market and are still holding their assets will have no problem buying the asset even cheaper since the ROI of their investment is already unprecedentedly high. Um, basically what they're saying is, is that a lot of these people have early Bitcoin, very low price. They're actually going to sell their Bitcoin because when they sell their Bitcoin, it dumps the price and they can buy it back in cheaper. That's the exact whale strategy. 
Like, that's what whales do. And in addition, what a lot of them will do is when they know they're about to sell and will impact the market. And by the way, CryptoFace had a video one time where he showed when he sold his Bitcoin literally to the minute on Coinbase, you could see the price drop. He literally showed that the amount of Bitcoin that he sold that day dumped the price of Bitcoin. And CryptoFace is not a whale, okay? No. He, he is not, he doesn't have a, a billion dollars in Bitcoin like some of these people have, okay? So, so the point is, is when you have a significant amount of Bitcoin that you can sell, you know it's going to dump the market. You're dumping it, you'll buy it back in later, then what else are you doing? Shorten it. You shorten the market right before you sell because you know it's going to dump. And it's, that's, you know, what they say, make your money work for you. Yeah. Well, I know how to do that. Well, that was also kind of Daniel from Chart Champions when he was on here talking about similar tactics of also even sniping where other people have stop losses. Same thing. You push it down to that point where you know you're going to stop everybody out and then it triggers all those sell orders yeah. and it pushes down even more. Yep. Absolutely. Bringing through support. Uh, Willie Wu's tweet was an answer to another author who would know the Bitcoin buyers holding the crypto since sixty to thirty thousand dollars will not sell it even if it drops to twenty thousand dollars, suggesting that traders who hold at major losses are most likely to bag hold further down despite their loss. Um, investors who follow specific strategies or rely on short-term cycles usually sell their assets after they cross a certain price threshold rather than holding through a full bearish cycle. Number of wallets is an uptrend. That's good stuff, at least. Here we go. Bitcoin on track to hit 100K nine months from now. Mm. Uh, Bitbull CEO predicts. There he is. Wow. Man, oh. I tell you what. When's the last time you used uh, Bitbull? I, I don't even remember. I don't know if I ever have. Oh, you haven't? No. I'm, I love Bitbull. Really? You use it all the time. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I mean, just tell people what it is. What? You tell people what Bitbull is. I have no know? idea. Oh, you have no idea? No. Oh, well, uh, can you take the screen down? Sure. You're going to go look it up and no, tell us all? I would never do that. It's a, uh, well, obviously, it's, it's a bit, bitable capital. It's a, um, don't show the screen. Uh, it is a fund of funds that invests in actively managed crypto hedge funds. So A, f a fund of funds? It's a fund of funds. It's like a friend of friends. Right. Fund of funds. A fund of fun. <laughs> like That's fun dip. Good. Yeah. Who loves fun dip? We were talking about that in the chat the other day. Oh, you were? Everybody loves Fun Dip. What's the best part? The best part of Fun Dip? There's Eating the so stick at the parts. end. Eating the stick at Eating the, the end? Eating the stick at the end. Some people eat the stick right off the rip. Well, they're idiots. They don't and know then, what they're doing. And then they Here, Here's it. what you do. You take the stick. You lick it. Yeah. Get it wet. Then you put it in there. You got a nice little amount of granules all, all right. over the stick. Scoop it. You suck it. Suck it off. All right. Sorry. Perfect. I don't know why I had to go with that last part. Yeah. Somebody could clip that. That'd be yeah. great. No, 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 no. Oh, this is bad. Well, my wife's even here. Well, today. that's what I was going to say. It seems like you'll take it one step further when Bethany's in the audience. Mm. Well, you know. Mm. Trying to put on a show. impress the ladies. Yeah. Are you impressed, hon? She said, sure. Uh -oh. All right. Uh, I'm taking her out to lunch today. It's working. Yeah, that's right. All right, so he says it's going to 100K. Uh, yeah, like, I always think it's funny. The reason why I made, like, a little, <laughs> I made a little thing about that is because you see, like, these people quoted, like, CEO of Bitbull. How many of oh, you guys yeah. know what that is? Yeah, nobody. No, nobody in here probably knew what that is. Maybe one or two. May, maybe if you read the story, you know what it, what it is. But the point is, like, we quote these people like they're somebody, you know? Like, I'm sure he's got a lot of money. I'm sure he does well. He's, a, you know, interconnected. But, like, I don't know. It's it just like CEO of Bitbull says, like, you know, 100K. They don't, you know, I, I just don't think it's got a ton of credibility, you know, of like, this is someone that we should all be looking at and covering a story today. I'm like, this guy say it's, says it's going to 100K. It's like anonymous analysts. Like, it is. Random Twitter user. <laughs> yeah, says. exactly. It's yeah. like Twitter account user 23874 says, yeah. Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. Thanks, even, Greg. even in times of war, the intrigue and enigma have always surrounded Bitcoin. Always surrounded. Wow. Always. It's 2009. The world's most sought after digital assets still hog the headlines. Case, cases like these, Russia's protracted invasion of Ukraine, took the entire crypto market to test uh, multiple times over. Despite a decline in the, Bitcoin, in the price of Bitcoin since November, he says it's still on course. It hit 100K by the end of the year. Um, Joe DePasquale 
uh, shared his viewpoints about Bitcoin's role in the Russia-Ukraine war. According to the CEO of BitBull, despite the gloomy mood that has dominated the crypto market since the start of the year, Bitcoin's still on course to hit 100K in the next 24 months. Uh, D. Pasquale stated that the year 2023 is a fair bet and that many people will re require some time this year to relax and take off and let off some steam. Is that what we need this year? To relax and take off some steam? I thought that's what we did in 2020. Yeah. Uh, 2019, that's what we did for sure. So, and, and by the way, I'm not saying anything about, look, bad about this guy. I don't want you guys to misunderstand what I'm saying. It, maybe a smart guy. Maybe he's 100% correct. Just saying like the idea that nobody knows who he is and they're touting him as like somebody we should all know and respect his opinion. Like that's the thing. I just think it's weird. It, I just picked today's story to kind of pick on the media for doing that. But, uh, you know, hope he's right. I mean, would you like $100,000 Bitcoin in nine months? Sounds great. Sounds great at this point. Uh, let's see. They're talking about sanctions and yada, yada, yada. So, all right, let's move on to charts. Does Frank want to come up and do charts today? Frank. Frank. Frank you want to do charts or no? Yeah, he's yeah just, come on in, Frank. We don't, have any, we don't have a special guest today. Yeah. So just come on. Do, there, there's no point in me doing charts when Frank is here. <laughs> I mean, this is the guy. This is Frankie Candles. Frankie let's Candles. What's going on, guys? Uh, I'm actually currently in a trade. Uh, oh. So we can talk about that in just a second. Uh, but let's pull it up. Uh, and let's take a look. Are you trading your job in just crypto for a job with another crypto YouTuber? <sighs> never, never. It's all about loyalty. It is. It is. It I'm is. never leaving the Bit Squad. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start here on the weekly. Um, let me just pull up Market Cipher B real quick. Boom. Okay, let me get rid of this RSI. Okay, so uh, can you adjust that browser just? Oh yeah. Drag it up. Oh, no. Nah. Yeah, it's more just collapse the right hand side and pull the pricing gotcha. down a bit. Boom. Mm -hmm. Let me just. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. All right. So, taking a little look at the weekly, really not much more to look here. Kind of looking the same as yesterday. Uh, so, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Uh, but coming down to the daily, guys, I, I, I always bring this up. The daily is looking pretty good, right? We did dump a little bit, uh, but this daily, we're waiting for the money flow crossover on the daily. This is kind of what I'm looking for for the next move up. Uh, we are getting pretty close here. Could cross over, I would say, in a, you know, a day or two, maybe three days, uh, but should be crossing over you know, somewhat soon. Now, um, you know, uh, actually, I don't know why my drawings don't update on here. Oh, maybe... Yeah, interesting. I don't know why my drawings don't update on this chart. Um, but basically what we're looking at here uh, on the daily is, you know, we're, we're basically in, you know, somewhat of an ascending triangle here. Uh, let me just draw these lines quick. Boom. Quick and dirty, quick and dirty. Um, yeah, so we have not broken the support level for this ascending triangle. Now, ascending triangles obviously are, uh, you know, typically bullish patterns. So they typically break out to the upside more often than they break down to the downside. So, we, uh, you know, I'm kind of just watching this level, uh, the bottom of the triangle here, uh, before I start, you know, looking at further, you know, a decent amount of further downside for Bitcoin. Hopefully we can get our way, you know, uh, past, past these resistance levels and back up to the top of the triangle and hopefully get a breakout, right? So, uh, you know, and I think, I think I did bring this up on the stream Last time I was on price targets, if we do break to the upside out of this triangle, would be uh, around 55K. Uh, so that is kind of where I was looking for a relief rally, hopefully up to that level. But we're going to have to watch this because we are coming down a little bit, uh, just looking to hold that support on the bottom of this triangle. And then uh, let's just come down to some of these lower time frames and take a look. Yeah, you can see a little zoomed in, a little closer that we are bouncing off of this uh, support uh, down at the bottom of this ascending triangle. Uh, let me get rid of these Bollinger Bands. Uh, just making the chart look messy. We don't like that. We don't like that. Um, all right, so coming down to the two-hour, right? So two-hour money flow crossing down could be, uh, you know, but we do have the VWAP coming up, so we might have, uh, that's more indicative of sideways action, uh, you know, for the most part. Uh, look, coming down to the one-hour, right, you do have the money flow making a crossover into the red as the VWAP is coming down. Right. So, um, you know, that is bearish. I am, am in a scalp short at the moment. Uh, I was I haven't looked at it in a few minutes, but I was up about five percent. 
Um, so that is good, making a little bit of profits there, right? Because, you know, on our channel, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't know this, right? Like you can make money going, uh, you know, if prices going up, but you can also make money if price is going down, right? So, you know, in the beginning of the bull market, it's super, super exciting, right? Everybody's making tons of money. It's, you know, we're getting these God candles to the upside. Uh, but, you know, although we do like to see the bull market and we don't like bear markets, if you do enter a bear market, just remember, you can trade those big red dips just like you trade the big green dips. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, basically what I'm looking at here. So, um, yeah, looking to hold the bottom of this ascending triangle. And, uh, you know, with all that being said, Wait, bing, bong. Before oh. you run off, tell yes. them where to find you. Uh, yeah, follow me on the Frankie Candles YouTube channel. Uh, you could also follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore Candles. I do go live every single day at 5.45 uh, p.m. right after Around the Blockchain, uh, showing you guys, you know, if we have a big move, I try to show you what you guys could have seen on the chart uh, before it happens so you can get into trades and make some money. Uh, and we have a good time. We have a good time. We do some challenges uh, and we do a lot of giveaways too. We're giving away a Ledger Nano S currently. So uh, definitely tune into the live stream uh, to get details on that and get some good giveaways and uh, get some good TA knowledge and learn how to trade, whether you're a complete beginner or if you're already in there and you just looking to, uh, you know, just learn some extra stuff and become more profitable. So we're having a good time over there. Bing awesome. bong. Bing bong. <laughs> we beat you to it. Where can y'all find Frank? Where can you find Frank? Well, up until we found some use out of him, it was in a cage down in the basement. <laughs> but now he's here. We finally, we okay, can we just can we make that official announcement that we have let Frank permanently out of the cage? We freed Frank. Free, freed him. All, all your uh, requests have been heard. Frank is now free. Yeah, Frank is now free. What about the guy who said he only watches the show for TJ's OCD moments? <laughs> if y'all if y'all could experience what I have to experience, or the, the movement I see back here with the stuff he's doing. Uh, when he's doing his OCD stuff, let me tell you. All right, uh, let's move on here to Raul Pal, talking about the future of Bitcoin here. Um, Raul Pal on BTC. Speaking of those moments. Speaking of those moments. There you go. Um, ignore short-term noise. Focus on exponential long-term trend. Data Dash said, this is from Jake Fever's special super chat here, Data Dash was right when he said 100% chance BTC not going to 100K in 2021. Now he says 200K end of year. Does he? Wow, oh, okay. Well, we like uh, Data Dash. Nicholas Murney did a course for us in the BitBoy Lab, the BitLab Academy. You can visit bitlabacademy.com to get started in your uh, you know crypto university journey. We got stuff for beginner, expert, and intermediate. Um, and also make sure to check out uh, Digifox, which is his uh, uh, Nicholas Merton's app that's been created to help you to uh, receive your paycheck in crypto. Yeah, you can get whatever percentage you want of your pay in Bitcoin. And it's one of the lowest, I think it's only like a 3% fee. Don't quote yeah. me on that. I don't know if that's accurate. But I know it's one of the lowest and most efficient ways to dollar cost to average into Bitcoin. It's a pretty cool yeah. service. Love to see a BitBoy dodgeball match. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Not a bad idea. Yep. Good. Played a uh, they played uh, dodgeball at baseball practice last night, but uh, I missed it, unfortunately. You do pretty good at the dodgeball I bet. After, after practices when we play with the boys. Uh, they're always surprised that I, I'm like old man, you know, like I just stand there, I don't really move, and they throw the ball, I just catch it. Yeah. yeah that's it. You seem like you'd be like surprisingly spry, too. I'm very spry. Yeah, yeah I am very surprisingly spry. I've, I've been that way since I was young. Those pickleball skills coming yeah, out. Like I would be the, usually they would pick me last. One time. Yeah. And they would realize the errors of their ways. The dodgeball dark horse. That's it. <laughs> Raul Powell and Bitcoin ignore short-term noise. Focus on exponential long-term trend. And guys, that's what we tell you guys with our philosophy. Develop a long-term mindset. You got to develop a long-term mindset to win overall. In a bull run, just like Frank was saying, like things are exciting. Things are happening really, really fast. But overall, you got to focus on the long-term. On March 9th, uh, Goldman Sachs, or former Goldman Sachs executive, Raul Powell, Share his latest thoughts on Bitcoin and Ethereum prior to funding a macroeconomic and investment strategy service. Uh, global macro investor in 2005, he co-managed, I don't want to talk about all the stuff he manages, they have all these Gs. Let's talk about what he's doing now. He's currently the CEO of finance and business video channel, Real Vision. Uh, in the April 2020 issue of the GMI, GMI newsletter, he said that he believes Bitcoin was the future and would one day have a $10 trillion valuation. Uh, he said it wasn't that Crazy, but since then, Powell has provided updates on changes to his crypto holdings. For example, on October 29th, he said he was irresponsibly long on Ethereum. 
Uh, I went on to explain what types of other crypto assets he holds. Um, he loves layer ones, DeFi and interoperability stuff, Rally, Chili's, Dapper Labs, Sandbox, and Decentraland. We're in a daily hodl. He was published on March, uh, those published on March 4th. I talked about his views on Bitcoin and Ethereum, how they had changed, yada, yada, yada. What? That was a lot of stuff to get to what the article's about. Yeah. Did they actually get there? Yeah, we just got there. Late right. yesterday, the Real Vision CEO took to Twitter to offer some advice to those Bitcoin investors who are concerned about the fact that in the face of the current geopolitical tensions, Bitcoin seems to be behaving, to be behaving more like a risk on asset than a traditional safe haven such as gold. He wants investors to see short-term volatility as nothing but noise and focus on the enormous potential over the long term. Uh, this is very easy to do when you have a lot of money, by the way. It's yeah. much easier to focus on the long term when you understand for the long term, you're in a good financial spot. I know right. a lot of you guys are not in that spot. I know yeah. a lot of people that watch this channel, uh, especially that came in last year, like you're down. And you thought this was the way that you were going to change your life forever with money and maybe retire at the end of this year, even, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and it didn't happen. And the thing is, that's how everyone is when you first get into crypto. Mm -hmm. Everyone feels that way when you first get into crypto that, oh, I'm gonna retire next year. Look at this, prices are going up. Wow, I'm so excited. You realize it's not as easy. It's easy to make money in crypto. It's hard to make money in crypto day to day, uh, month over month. Year over year, it's pretty easy. Cycle over cycle is pretty easy. So keep that in mind. We want you to develop a long-term mindset, but over the short term, you got to get through a time where, you know, you're dealing with some disappointment from thinking this was going to be extremely easy, right? He still seems to be holding. He said Bitcoin is correlated with risk in the short term. Of course it does. It's an asset and they all do. It's subject to short-term liquidity and behavior, but its long-term trend is exponential. Unlike most other risk assets, I don't know why people struggle with this hashtag noise. He still seems to be holding on to his belief that Ethereum is an even better asset to hold over the long-term, which I agree with 100%. Uh, when asked why he holds uh, one Bitcoin, if he likes BTC so much, he replied, you know the answer, gentlemen prefer ETH. Now, I need a British accent. <laughs> if I had a British accent, this channel would be double the size. Yeah, that's probably true. They say that uh, a lot of people like a British accent. I tell you what, you know what? You know oh, what I love? No, Ga Gala no. games. I love Gala games. Oh, boy. Love Gala. You do a how lot. About, of how about we go to the Gala this week, TJ? You and I, I'll be the gentleman. You will be my lady. Oh, well, definitely not that. But you do a lot of things really, really well. Mm. Uh, accents and impressions, probably not one of them. <laughs> my wife says every one of my foreign accents yeah. sounds the exact same. <laughs> yeah. And, None of which sound like no. any foreign country. <laughs> yeah, but the giveaway was, I said gala, gala games. That's, that's pretty good. As long as there's not too many words in a row. Americans say gala. <laughs> wow. It's true. You get me fired up. Yeah, well, and I wish we had the clip of last night when Jay Chains busted that door down. Oh my gosh. That what is it on? It's on Instagram, right? Was it on a story? I was on my story, yeah. I don't know if it's on the BitBoy story. Oh my, I got locked in my office last night. That was crazy. I got locked? In my own office. I was a prisoner in my own place of work. Yeah. It's mine. It was very concerning. It you was. know, I, I'm just glad that, like, it wasn't one of these nights where I was the last person here. Yeah. I don't know what I would have done. I, was, I would still be in that office. I might have starved to death. You might have slept in there. I might have. I do. There is a, a refrigerator in there with some drinks. So I might have been able to survive for a, a fortnight or two. But, uh, yeah, it was tough. I mean, I'm just glad that, uh, you know, People knew my location, and J Chains busted the thick destroyed office door down. Destroyed, destroyed it. it. Yeah. Oh, he says, I just hear him say, "Watch out!" I'm thinking he's kidding. I don't think yeah. he's serious. He goes, he starts running. <laughs> oh! I just imagine like very similar to Jordan Davis at the combine, you know? Yeah. Oh! And then just wow, the lock from the door, like the the. The part that's in the frame of the door that's got the little, you know, the thing that goes in and out that locks it, it flew like a bullet across the room when yeah. he broke the door down. I get, we got to make a full post out of that. It was it, insane. It shook the whole building. Shook the whole building. I did get out, though. I did get out of my office. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, you weren't by the door. No. That was wild. Jay Chains is a champ. I, I thought it was a joke. And he really did it. So, amazing. <laughs> the, the, here's another one of these stories. I mean... The, this story is all about this tweet. The tweet's all the way down here at the bottom. And then it's like basically has 
one, one sentence after it, and that's the whole story. Ah, the uh, bar for media these days. Here's another influencer, I guess, maybe. The Tether CTO, talking about the future of stablecoins. He believes the CBDCs will not impact private stablecoin market. Says the CTO of a private stablecoin market. Yeah. Uh, Paolo Arduino, the chief technology officer at Tether, believes that the growing developments around central bank digital currencies globally wouldn't really impact the role of private stablecoins. I, I actually do agree with this. Uh, so I want to be clear. I do agree with what he's saying, but it, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, uh, crypto YouTuber BitBoy Crypto believes <laughs> the future for crypto YouTube is bright. Right. <laughs> like, come on, guys. Even though I do, I do believe it's bright. Uh, he shares two cents on a Twitter thread on the growing discussion around CBDCs, what their role could be in the current payment system. He says they would only replace the age-old centralized payment networks like SWIFT, which we know what's replacing that. Uh, went on to explain CBDCs are not about digitizing fiat currency. It's already been done, given the most, the most modern-day transactions are digital. The main goal of CBDCs is to use private blockchains as a modern and cost-controlled tech infrastructure where most of the bank transfers and credit debit card transactions will be settled via CBDCs. He claimed the private stablecoins such as Tether will remain relevant. Which I'm telling you, I, I'm I'm hearing some stuff uh, in the background about Tether and the direction it's going. I we we've told you guys for a long time, move out of Tether, move into USDC, move out of Tether, move into USDC. Not an alarmist thing. I think if, if something does happen with Tether, everybody be fine. You'll probably have time to to move stuff over. But why why wait? You know why wait? I would yeah. just do it now. So, um, all right, and it may you know some of them here may not be true. So you yeah, know. But you're slowly seeing USDC become the most listed, interoperable. It's the easiest to exchange the most things with a lot of different places. That's why we slowly kind of ended up do, backing our way into it by default almost. Yeah. What so is it, BJ doing in here? Is, is BJ oh, super chatting? Is he? Oh, yeah. there he is. Background there looking. Is. Hot. Are you in the room, BJ? He might be. He might be. He's like, not. He's he can, not no, no. He's, a, he's, he's down here. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he's remote. Remoted into my computer. Terrifying. It is a little scary. Like the lawnmower, man. Okay. Goldman Sachs to ex exit Russia in Wall Street's first pullout. Wow. I always love the story of the first pullout. Yep. Firm's credit exposure to the nation is about $650 million. Bank is closing out pre-existing obligations in the market. Goldman Sachs Group said it, plan said it plans to close its operations in Russia First major Wall Street bank to leave in response to the nation's invasion of Ukraine. Um, let's see. They're focused on supporting their clients across the globe, yada, yada, yada. The Wall Street powerhouse has maintained a presence in Russia in recent years. The country doesn't amount to a, a meaningful portion of its global banking business. At the end of 2021, the firm's total credit exposure was $650 million, bucks, most of which was tied to non-sovereign counterparties or, or borrowers. <clears throat> while, Goldman sat, while Goldman is exiting Russia, Firm is still trading corporate debt tied to the country without the bank itself making wagers on price movement. So moving out of Russia, they're the first Wall Street firm to announce. Uh, Citigroup said it's assessing operations. Um, here, here is the game. <clears throat> here, here is the game that uh, these banks and institutions must play. Here, here, here's the game. How can we say we're pulling out of Russia and still be there and make money? Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. That's what Citigroup's saying. Citigroup's saying, we're assessing the situation. We're trying to come up with the best spin right. to where we can say we pulled out, which means maybe they shutter the doors on one office and one building and say, well, we left Russia. That's, uh, they're, they're in the money-making business. They could care less about uh, what Actually, no, they do care about war. They love it. Yeah. They love war because it creates great opportunities uh, you know, to come in and buy up entire cities that are decimated and things like that. So um, I, I definitely believe that... Uh, this guy says, I remember the time I told my wife 20 years ago, hey, hon, I'm seriously going to buy a thousand Bitcoins. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. That reminds me, do, do you, I think it was Kim Bozak that had a video where he was talking to a guy on Uber and the guy was like, yeah, man, back in 2001, man, I was very close to buying Bitcoin, man. I was really excited about it. My friend had told me about it. It was like three pennies back then and, you know, whatever it was. It's so funny when people talk about like Bitcoin before 2009. It's not yeah. a real thing. Didn't exist back then. Didn't yes. exist. Speaking of Russia, Russians turned to crypto as Western sanctions hit the ruble. As Russia's economy began to tank, 
Data shows how uh, shows many turn to Bitcoin and other crypto as a store of value and a means of transaction, the, the double use case fulfilled. Russians are piling into Bitcoin and other cryptos following a sharp drop uh, in the ruble and concerns some of the nation's banks have been blocked from using key international payment system, including SWIFT, as you guys know. Among the sanctions designed to punish Moscow for its attack on Ukraine, Western nations agreed on February 26th to ban seven Russian banks from using the Society for Worldwide, Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, the global banking communication platform. The move dramatically limits the ability of these banks to send or receive remittances, with one Russian expat who requested anonymity for fear and reprisal, describing it as a financial nuclear bomb. Now, I tell you what's really interesting. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can find find this guy here on Instagram. He's a very famous guy. Uh, okay. So this is Alex Ovechkin. Okay. You guys may know him as uh, a hockey player. The, yeah. What's that? He's a hockey player. He's a hockey player. One of the yeah. greatest hockey players, and won a championship with uh, the Capitals. The first time in a long time they had won one, maybe four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we, uh, you know, he just. All star every year, but he's probably won the MVP. I guess that's what they call it. probably some trophy in, yeah. in hockey. Nice. What's it called in hockey? The MVP trophy. Is it? It's called MVP trophy. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm sure. All, it's, all the hockey yeah. trophies are named after like a. It does know, have a like name. the Bobby Orr trophy or something like that. Yeah, I don't that's, know. Uh, that's like Bob, yeah. two out of the four hockey players I know. I what just did you say? About. Bobby, Bobby Orr. Yeah, that's, I think that might be right. Might be. He was a great hockey player. He used to play without a helmet. Yeah. Real stud right there. Uh, but. Do you guys notice here on the Instagram something kind of interesting? <laughs> Profile picture. Him and Vladimir Putin. Alex Ovechkin is getting a lot of grief on Instagram for uh, keeping this picture up. Okay, keeping this picture up. People are saying, well, he must support what they're doing, yada, yada. Well, there's been a very interesting article out um, that has been discussing Russian celebrities and athletes, and how, guess what? A lot of them live here, but guess where their families live? Their families live in Russia still, a lot of them. So if Alex Ovechkin takes down this profile picture and during this time, what does that say? That says he doesn't support what Putin is doing, which I'm sure he doesn't. But if he actually did that and went through that process, then what, what does that mean for his family back home? Where Putin says, oh, all of a sudden, you know, we let you go to America and you're crushing it over there and your family's here and now you don't support what we're doing? Interesting stuff. It's more complicated. A lot of this stuff is more complicated than people, you know, think. It's not just, oh, Alex Ovechkin needs to take down his picture with Putin, okay? There's a lot more to it than just that. I mean, if we look at what happened with Justin Sun and the Warren Buffett lunch, basically his family was threatened back in China if he held that lunch and with the big hype that it was supposed to have, then they, who knows what they're going to do to his family. He had to put out a, an apology. Well, you guys don't know about that story. That was, you know, yeah. that's, that's crypto history. We were talking about that uh, after Around the Blockchain. I was talking about that with uh, some folks that were on the show. They didn't even know that any of that had happened. So very interesting stuff. But anyways. Speaking uh, of Justin Sun. Speaking of Justin Sun. Accused of insider trading and gaming the crypto market system, which he definitely has yeah. done. Uh, a new investigative report published on The Verge. And I tell you, did Justin Sun put out this article himself? He might have. I, when have you heard Justin Sun more in the news than the last couple of weeks? Not at Not all. Not in two or three years. And all of a sudden, people are talking about Tron again. Yep. Weird. A new investigative report published on The Verge has linked crypto mogul Justin Sun to many infractions. According to the piece, he co-founded Tron and also owns BitTorrent and Poloniex. He's broken almost every rule in the book since he started his crypto journey. The controversial CEO has been embroiled in several controversies from tax evasion to market manipulation since 2017. I've been around in crypto since then. Before then, TJ has been around since then. Mm -hmm. If you appreciate that we have experience on this channel, make sure to smash that like button, guys. Let's go ahead and make sure to smash that like button if you guys like all the stories we cover, the side trails we go on, the, the articles tweets, everything, make sure to hit that like button. It's the number one thing you can do to support this channel, especially if you're in the XRP army. There's some people out there throwing some shade on XRP these days, but that's okay. Let them throw the shade. We're going to enjoy the shade from our palm trees when we're all living on our, in our vacation houses at the beach. So Let's go.
let's go. The controversial CEO has been embroiled in several controversies from tax evasions to market manipulation. Tron, uh, after the Tron ICO, uh, they forced him to leave China. His actions in the U.S. at the helm of BitTorrent and Poloniex could make him liable for prosecution. Uh, the article describes Tron as an escape artist who has always managed to find his way out of legal troubles. That's what money will do. According to the journalist, several former and current employees and official documents confirm these allegations against Tron founder. One such allegation is insider trading, which alleges that Tron's market-making team bought large amounts of the token when Tron had positive public announcement. Oh, good surprise. Push the price up, making it possible to sell at a major profit. This kind of market manipulation is illegal with stop trading and might lead to liability in crypto trading. Some former employees also accused him of being domineering and sometimes ordering illeg illegalities. And I know this because I know people that have worked there. I know this to be true, that he, he is... Um, as Putin-like of a leader as you can get in crypto. I'll just say that. That's a good thing people probably understand. Very domineering, uh, very uh, cruel, very cruel to his employees um, and things like that. That's something that's pretty, been pretty widespread there. They hated when Justin Sun would show up uh, at the office. You know, it's like when you were a kid and, you know, you had one parent that was like real easy on you and then the other parent, you're like, oh gosh, you know, whenever they get home, you know, it's like you hear that garage door open, you hear them coming home. That's, that's how the people at Tron were about him. So, uh, According to a former employee, Sun wanted to launch the BitTorrent uh, token. He wanted to avoid liability by describing it as a utility token. Thus, he asked the chief compliance officer for BitTorrent, David Labart, to draft a document showing BTT was a utility token and not security. Although, although Labart refused to do this, Sun still launched a token by airdropping it to BitTorrent users. So the BitTorrent people didn't want a token. Long short of it. Yeah. Uh, also detailed multiple bank accounts linked to Sun uh, with different um, countries. He took control of $11 million worth of Bitcoin belonging to Poly, uh, Poloniex users. Uh, let's see, threatened to sue. Who, who did he threaten to sue? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It doesn't really say. So, and this is just a small, like, this is just a tiny, tiny snippet of the stuff Justin Sun's done. Yeah. So I mean, uh, how, about, how about owning most of the super representatives on the Tron network, making it centralized, you know? Right. How about that? How about the fact he's linked to almost every single one of them? There have been multiple scams that have been free to run on the Tron network that Justin Sun has in a loose way known about or had something to do with. Uh, it's been, you know, this has happened over and over again, so much so that, like, you know, people don't even really pay attention to him anymore. Yeah, and he's not, this doesn't even touch on the stuff he's done in DeFi, which, who knows, if they really start doing some forensic, analysis. I'm a lot of sure people say that. the entire bull run every single time was just done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty wild. But this is in line with what we've seen from the SEC of going after bigger, more high-profile, large-number kind of cases. So going after Justin Sun for some of this kind of stuff would be consistent with the direction we're seeing them go. It, it would be. Well, I tell you, though, you know, on that executive order, it seemed to be very clear that the SEC doesn't have a lot of say in this stuff. Right. Yes. They're, they're passing a lot of the things that they are, have been responsible for to other organizations mm -hmm. in, in the government. They, we're going to see maybe this XRP case is the last big hurrah for the SEC in crypto. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I should have said government, not SEC. Right. right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sun, blah, 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 blah. Controversy, blah, 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 blah. Price of journalism, while Tron's TRX was initially seeing a rally, it fell by 5.17%. Uh, meanwhile, weighted sentiment made it clear that the, the news hit readers hard. Yada, yada, yada. I mean, guys, the price dropped because the price of Bitcoin dropped. I, why, why do we try? I, I don't understand this. I, I don't understand why we try so hard in crypto to find the reason that an altcoin dumped the same day that Bitcoin dumped. It's the most asinine, idiotic thing we do in crypto. Like, Guys, why did XRP drop today? I, let's go look at the technicals. Let's go try to let's go try to figure it out. Guys, Bitcoin dropped like eight or five, five or eight percent, whatever it is. That's why it fell. It's not hard to figure out. Idiots. Uh, Traveler says he's been watching the channel since early 2017. I remember commenting during the deep bear market when there were only 20 or so likes on your videos. Keep up the good work. Well, he must mean early 2018. Must mean early 2018. Yeah. Because uh, we started in January 2018, but that was the deep bear market. So I yeah. think that's what he meant. Uh, we appreciate all the people that watch the channel. When I had hundreds of video, you know, hundreds of views of video, I was lucky to get 500 views. I was extremely lucky. So remember the good old times. Yeah, good old days. Man. Back in the green box. In the green box. 
cannot believe we don't have a picture of the green box. Maybe one will surface one day. You have the picture, honey, do you have the picture of us going to get the stuff? Can you airdrop that to me over here? I think you can airdrop it. Did you airdrop it? Should be able to. Should be able to. I'm not on Wi-Fi, though. Well, then. They got to be on Wi-Fi. It's, uh, it might be blue. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. I'd like to get the, this, it's the closest picture to the green box that we have. Crypto scams, uh, second biggest type of fraud, which is interesting because they don't say what number one is yeah, in here at all. Huh. The Better Business Bureau scam tracker show that crypto scams rose from seventh riskiest in 2020 to the second riskiest in 2021. Let's see here. According to the BBB scam tracker, although crypto scams made up only 1.9% of the scams reported by the BBB scam tracker, the median dollar loss was 1,200 much higher and the overall median dollar loss of $169. Yeah. More than 66% of people reported losing money when targeted by this type of scam. However, researchers, researchers noted one positive finding from the 2021 report showing susceptibility or the percentage of consumers who reported losing money when exposed to a scam falling for the first time since 2017. So that's pretty good. Uh, victims of scams are typically aged between 25 and 64. They're adults. Good way to say that. <laughs> Uh, research said crypto scams affect people, blah, 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 blah. That's a really big uh, number there. 25 to 64. That's uh, studies show most of them reported uh, uh, cases came from offers from friends on social media whose accounts have been hacked. Not, that's not no, true. They haven't been hacked. They're impersonated. Yeah. Right. That's what's so frustrating. Everybody thinks it's uh, you're getting hacked and actually talking to somebody and convincing them to do it. It's almost always a spoof account that's pretty easy to recognize most okay let's see if this will work here I'm trying to airdrop it i had to turn on the wi-fi though there it is okay yep send send there we go waiting accept downloads go to my downloads folder there it is okay i'll put it over here there it is guys there it is this is a picture. This is from, well, this, you reposted this on December 31st, 2020. Uh, this was the day that we went to Home Depot and we bought all of the stuff to build the box to create this YouTube channel. That's there it. That's the day. It's pretty cool. That is pretty we don't have a picture of the box. You, and that was kills be me. because you were doing a green screen, right? You yeah. were trying to get the light right. And so you built an entire box to go inside. Yeah. yeah. And didn't realize I had to light up the box too. So it never got it right. Never figured it out. Never figured it out. We figured it out finally here. Yeah. You know, finally I got people that know how to do this stuff. But and that was a that was a that, that was a day right there. That was a day right there. All right. Nifty news. Are are Ty Lopez NFTs the market top? <laughs> Ty Lopez NFT drop has caused a stir while Alibaba has banned users from using uh massage guns to spam by NFTs. Oh, what the frick? Have you seen have you seen those TikToks when you're trying to get on like a whitelist and you're pushing the button over and over and over and over and over? People are using massage guns on their phones just Yeah, it's wild. Unbelievable. Some in the non-fungible community uh fear the market top may be in after Ty Lopez, controversial entrepreneur and social media star famous for his oddball marketing tactics, launched his own NFT project. Oh, look at this. Uh, FX is like function, a.k.a. I got to Okay, let's move on. The NFT project is dubbed the OG social club of the original garage club. Because you know in that garage, he's got Lamborghinis and knowledge. Pays homage to his highly memoed or memed on ad from 2015, in which Lopez funded his Ferrari in his 2000 new books in his garage to promote his business courses of allegedly dubious value. NFTs come in three levels of rarity. The silver mentorship of mentorship uh, cards, gold mastermind cards, and black one-on-one -on -one mentorship cards. These all provide access to an online social club and varying levels of access to Lopez himself. In the silver tier, for example, there's an NFT reportedly priced at 18.4 Ether, around 50K. What? He's got to be wash, washing these up. Those they didn't prices. sell out, apparently. They didn't? Mm -mm. Well, why would they? They're crazy prices. Um, let's see. I mean, if he sells one at ten thousand dollars, it's pretty good for him. Uh, let's see. Alibaba's NFT marketplace bans <laughs> massage guns. 
for, for suspendedly or reportedly suspended more than 680 users um, for using massage guns to buy NFTs. God, that's insane. That is insane. Okay. Ford 8 volume tank 65%. Oh, what is the, does the floor price drop a good bit? I don't know. Well, floor the floor price, price is up, up 22%. Wow. There's just people, the volume on NFTs is real interesting because the liquidity key, blah, the liquidity can come and go real quick. Sometimes relative to the overall market, sometimes not. Like if people are feeling rich with their Ethereum and stuff, they're a lot more likely to move stuff around, buy, sell, flip, than, you know, everything's going down. Everybody holds a little tighter. Yeah. Crypto.com airdrops, the moment of truth NFT collection featuring LeBron James. LeBron. Fans who discovered the hidden QR code in Crypto.com's Super Bowl commercial. Do you guys know they have to say big game because Super Bowl is... Uh, Trademarked? Yeah, trademarked. That's well, right. hey, I said it. Super Bowl. It was there. I think I can say it. Uh, the Super Bowl commercial featuring LeBron James got a chance to win an NFT from the Moment of Truth NFT collection. Crypto Exchange's video ad featured the young NBA star in the moment of making a life-changing decision about skimming college and going to the league. Yada, yada, yada. There's three tiers. Um Total of 5,550 NFTs were airdropped to the lucky winner. So they got airdropped. So they were not actually sold. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some might appear, uh, they're going to appear for resale on the Crypto.com NFT platform. All resale proceeds go to LeBron James Family Foundation. So good to see LeBron finally coming over to crypto. I mean, it's been something that probably needed to happen for a while. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people predicted it would happen. I mean, he's probably... Is LeBron James the biggest name in sports, you think? Pro probably, I would think so. And you're talking internationally, he's got to be up there. I know there's some, you know, not big over here, but soccer players that are very We well don't known. talk about soccer this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, we don't, when we talk about celebrity athletes, we don't talk about soccer. We know, we know they're there. We know they exist. Ronaldo's and your Neymar's and your dang, uh, what's the other one? Messi. Yeah. Messi. I mean, clean up, guy. Come on. <laughs> No, but I would clean, I, clean up. Messi. I would think LeBron has to be the most well-known international athlete. Or yeah. they're, yeah, probably. <laughs> Calvin Ridley's a big name this week. <laughs> Screw Calvin Ridley. Thank you, Calvin, for doing something idiotic, more idiotic than you've already done. And now we get your salary cap money back. So be gone and good riddance to Calvin Ridley. That's what I say. He's a he's a scammer in every sense of the word. See, they've if you look it up according to Google, it's Ronaldo. Of course, of course it's Ronaldo. Yeah, of course it is. You know, like, that doesn't surprise me. Um, here in America, I think, you know, Tom Brady and LeBron. Tom so, Brady may be bigger. I don't know. Uh, NBA or NFL is definitely a bigger sport here, but. Wow, this list is so interesting. So, top 10, they've got basically all the soccer players you named. Ronaldo, Messi, they've got LeBron, three. Neymar, four. They've still got Roger Federer, five. And Conor McGregor, six. <laughs> Nadal, Rafael Nadal, eight. So some of these international. John Cena, nine. John Cena? Yeah. And then Tiger Woods, 10. Ain't Let's seeing see nothing. Tiger Woods, 10? Yeah, it's surprising. That's for current. <sighs> That's as of 2022. Most, and this, you know, it's very subjective. Most important athletes right now, according oh, to Oh, I got, I got a guy who's unsubscribing because I don't like soccer. See ya. See you on the pitch, mate. Uh, celebrity NFTs, never before seen photos of 80 stars are minted. Here is Doogie Hauser giving us the bird. What? That's his parents. Rude. Golly, Doogie Hauser. Does anybody remember watching Doogie Hauser? I, I do. I remember watching. He'd do the thing at the end where he would like, at the end, it was on his like it, computer. It was just a blue screen with letters on it. Like that was the whole thing. And it was like his vlog. His, there weren't even vlogs back then. It was like his, his blog of the day at the end. Like, you know, sometimes you learn. It's very important. Focus on your family. Blah, 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 blah. Something like that. Some heartwarming message at the end, you know. But this might just be the real deal. So that NFTs worth having. Rolling Stone uh, photographer Bonnie Schiffman has just launched her own collection of NFTs named Bonnieverse NFTs. They reside on uh, OpenScam and are a fascinating look into her job as a celeb snapper. Uh, Jim Belushi right there. Or John Belushi, excuse me. It looks like Betty White, I guess. Uh, that's, uh, Sarah Jessica. No, no, that's not her. Whoa, what's her name? What's this girl's name that was in all the eighties movies? Eighties movies. Yeah. The redheaded girl that was in all Ra the eighties. Rachel McAdams. 
the 80s movies. The 80s, DJ. I was born in 89, so. Yeah, I, people will remember this. Mary Louise Parker, maybe? Maybe that's her name. Uh, doesn't Molly Ringwall. Name. Oh, Molly God. Ringwall. That's right. She was in all the 80s movies. Big, big thing. Uh, let's see. Who is that? Who's this? How does it not put their names underneath? Johnny okay. Rotten. Oh, the names are underneath. Yeah. Oh, they're right there. Molly Ringwald. I see it. How about that? Names right there. Uh, Michael Jackson, Do- Doogie Hauser, Steve Jeez. Jobs, Art Scampson, and Matt Groening. Um, yeah. So, do you want to buy those? There you go. Have fun. All right. Honey, I orange pilled the kids, BDC children's authors on learning about money. Hey, did uh, Brecky do this one? What's that? Did Brecky do this one? He was working on a kid's book for Bitcoin for like ever. I doubt it. Yeah. But he was working on that. Uh, let's see. Bitcoins for everyone. It includes teenagers, uh, children, toddlers, even newborns. When kids grow up, they'll use the Bitcoin protocol. So it makes sense to start to integrate Bitcoin into learning as early as possible. At least that's according to Scott Sibley, one half of the couple behind the creation of the Shamari Bitcoin game and the Goodnight Bitcoin Children's Bedtime Book. I love that. He joins a growing list of uh, Bitcoin children's book authors who care deeply about educating children on uh, Bitcoin and money. This is right, in, honey, this is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to write a Bitcoin for uh, a Bitcoin children's book? She, she bought a blockchain for a baby's book. Mm. Are you pregnant? I was going to say. Are, are we having a baby? Announcement stream. If, we're, if, if you are pregnant and we're having a baby, <laughs> There's going to be a lot of questions, yeah. including from me, on how that happened. All right. Uh, so Sibley and his wife are firm believers that children can learn much faster and earlier than people think. And I, it's very true. Like, you know, the way that kids grow up today with their interactions with digital, uh, digital it, it's almost like evolution. It's like they almost intrinsically understand how to use technology when they're born. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's so weird. Like you see these four-year-olds using these iPads. And you're like, God, when I was four, like I was having trouble pulling up the ladder on my fire truck, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, they've been seeing everybody. They've been watching exactly. everybody interact with these things, so they're exactly. subconsciously understanding it. They want us to spin the cameras around so they can see the room. That's impossible. Well, it's not impossible. It's not impossible? Yeah. Well, they're all with these cords and all this stuff. Oh, you can do it? Oh. DJ can do everything. Well, he said it's possible. Let's see if it is. Let's see. Uh-oh. Ah, go back. There's Kieran and my wife back there. Here we got live studio audience here. You draw all the way from Alabama to come watch the show today. All right, so that was fun. That was fun. Let's talk about everybody's favorite subject, XRP. We got an XRP update for you guys, which it's kind of interesting. Brings up a lot of uh, questions about the future of, uh, you know trading XRP, what that's going to look like. Ripple, 21 shares launches XRP exchange-traded product in CHF on six Swiss exchange. That's one Swiss exchange called six Swiss exchange. Uh, Now, if you don't remember this 21 shares, they actually launched an ETP that had uh, Polkadot in it. It made big news like maybe six months ago or more. Um, So Switzerland-based 21 shares AG. Consider one of the pioneers. Make sure to throw that X up. Yeah. Make sure to throw the X up. If you guys are in the XRP army, make sure to smash that like button. Uh, it's considered one of the pioneers when it comes to the issuance of crypto exchange traded products. And you kind of think of a lot of these foreign exchanges almost as testing grounds for what something like this would look like in the United States. And so really trying to figure out, you know, what could this mean? Like in the future, we'll get a, an XRP ETP here in America. XRP ETF in America. I believe eventually we will see that. Um, if, you've, if you're going to have Ethereum and you're going to have Bitcoin and then if Ripple joins that class of non-securities, why not? Right? What, what, what would be stopping it from becoming one? Maybe somebody knows. Maybe there is something. I don't, I don't know. The Sig Swiss Exchange is based in Zurich, which is actually not the capital of Switzerland. You guys learned that the other day. on the Earn. Earn, that's right. And in Switzerland's main stock exchange, it trades other securities such as Swiss government bonds and derivatives such as stock options. The exchange is owned by the Six Group, an unlisted public minted company itself controlled by 122 banks or institutions. So, see all the different stuff that they've got there. What is this HODL? They got HODL X, HODL, HODL V. 
There's the polka dot one I talked about. What about that memory, pulling that thing out? Boom. Um, let's see. 21 shares physically backed XRP ETP and 21 shares Ripple XRP ETP is touted as the world's first Ripple ETP. You can tell they are suit. By launching a Ripple ETP right now, you can tell that they are extremely scared that XRP is going to be considered a security. They're going to lose the case. Right. 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 Clearly. Let's face facts. All right, well, let's uh, move on here. Let me just flip through these stories. A new committee voting date for the European Parliament crypto law that can make waves. New crypto framework in Dubai to position the region's leader. It's definitely going to be the region leader. I mean, Chris and Carl are both there, right? Uh, Binance CEO reveals plan for uh, acquisition spree of traditional businesses, kind of following the Facebook model. Phantom-based uh, Phantasm was exploited for $2.6 million. FTX taps WB Games exec uh, for top gaming partnerships. Uh, let's see. Solana plays are triple digits. Support set at 80 bucks. That's good. GameFi is a new game for Southeast Asia players. Metaverse lets us explore human imagination. Sandbox, yada, yada. Russian parliament working group. Should, we, should be mechanisms to control crypto transactions. Well, that's weird. You'd think they wouldn't want to say that. Uh, small crypto miners fixated on dwindling towns and dilapidated buildings. Dilapidated, one of my favorite words. Hmm. I don't say it a lot. Man, it sounds great. All right, let's go. All right, you ready for some Q&A? Sure. Perfect. All right, first question, trail grinder for with a beginner one for everybody today. What is the block in blockchain? A block is a uh, series of transactions that are put together in order to move to the next block, okay? Yep. So that's kind of a, a good way to, to understand and imagine all these transactions out there floating around, people trying to send stuff. The miners, they grab them all into one little package, push all the transactions forward, and uh, that is a block. That's basically how to understand it. Perfect. All right, I got a studio question here from our visitor, Kieran. What, what's your question? With all these metaverse projects, all right, can you hear me now? Uh, with all these metaverse projects starting to roll out a lot more of their products like Sandbox, do you think that the user adoption, all of these players playing it, could create some kind of retail uh, surge in crypto? Thanks for your question, Karen. Uh, uh, yeah, I absolutely think so. I do think that metaverse participation by a lot of users can lead to a, a large increase in retail adoption. I mean, think about all the people that came into crypto through Axie Infinity. You know, is it really started blowing up all the Filipino users? Uh, I do think that is going to be the case. There's going to be an obvious integration between crypto at Sandbox, the Sand Token. Uh, obviously, people are going to get curious. And I do think that we are going to see, I think gaming in general is going to bring a huge Boon, boom or boon, both appropriate there, uh, for crypto. The only question is, how far off is it? I played Sandbox yesterday. I mean, it's pretty user-friendly. Um, I do hate playing games on computers. Yeah. I'm a console guy. Maybe they can, you think they could move that to console at some point? Did Michael, did you just laugh at that? That was Aaron. That was Aaron? Yeah. Uh, I bet it's going to be very difficult Aaron's for them to move that to being more cross-compatible. Yeah, just given the blockchain aspect of it, but I'm sure that's something they're focused on. Because I hate playing on a computer. Yeah. I feel like I'm playing Oregon Trail in, you know, 1989 at Canton Elementary School hey. in the computer lab with Miss Penny. That actually sounds pretty fun. It was fun, actually. Yeah. I died uh, of dysentery. Sorry. Jesse Young, okay. isn't the point of crypt... <laughs> that was good. Isn't the point of crypto decentralization? I feel regulation is backdoor centralization. We already have centralized exchanges. Thoughts? True. True. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, agree. Yeah. Those are the thoughts. You hit the nail on the head. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we're not for it. We're just reporting the news. Yeah. It's definitely coming. Uh, Q&A, will the low way hurt the chances of quote-unquote ETH killers if it continues to fall? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. 100%. If, uh, hear me now. If Ethereum is able to solve its gas problem, nothing will ever be able to touch it. You know, with the gas problems it has, still nothing's close to it. So that's the big holdup for, uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about that. Uh, interoperability is also a concern. So, you know, sure. it, it, you know, Polkadot has, you know, uh, Cosmos, they have good advantages there. But, I mean, do we really need interoperability if Ethereum blows everything else away? That's a thought, too. Crypto Steve-O. George says Ripple owns more than 50% of the total supply of XRP, and the way Ripple makes money is to sell XRP. Do you think that's true? Uh, they now I cannot speak to do they own more than 50% of the supply of the circulating supply. 
I don't know that number specifically. I'm pretty sure at one time that was definitely true. Yeah. Uh, what they said is during the bear market, that is what they did. They did to remain a profitable company, keep pushing things forward. They did sell XRP all throughout the bear market uh, in order to make profits. They've admitted to that. What does that look like in the future? Is they have more, because look, here, here's the fact. What, what does Ripple really offer? Banking services, right. okay? How many of the banks currently are using, are actively using RippleNet and the XRP token together? It's not a super high number at this point. It will be growing. There are a lot of them have signed up for their other services. But once more companies are signed up for their services and are using the XRP token, then they won't have to do that anymore. So that's the goal for them not to have to. That's definitely a big, uh, you know, a, a big issue with XRP. A lot of people took over the bear market. A lot of people left over that. Um, but, you know, at some point, this is where you have to develop the long-term mindset. Even if they're doing that in the short term, if the goal is to, you know, move it further, then it is what it is. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. Uh, very excited uh, about the show. Very excited to see where uh, crypto is going, as always. And uh, that's all we got. Be blessed. Good boy out.